So recently the Raspberry Pi Foundation released the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus and here it is. Now it's cheaper than the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus but yet it offers the same performance characteristics but obviously to lower down the price they had to change a few things. So if you want to find out more please let me explain. Okay, so here it is, the uh, Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus. And what I want to do today is do two things. First, I want to look at what is a Raspberry Pi, uh, what's a brief history of it, what are the good uses for it, and then I want to look specifically at the Model A Plus here and talk about what it means and how it differs to the Model B Plus. Now, if you already know about the Raspberry Pi and you just want to jump to the bit about this particular board, then there'll be a time code in the description below that'll let you jump forward uh, to that next part of the video. So a few years ago, Eben Upton discovered that the number of people who were attending university to study computer science was actually declining. And there'd been a peak of when people wanted to do advanced studies in computers that really came after all the home computer revolution from the 1980s and the 1990s. Children who grew up with computers in their house then wanted to go on to study uh, computer science. The problem was as we got into more commercialization of computers and we had consoles rather than home computers, the number of people who were kind of tinkering and interested in how the internals work uh, was reducing. So he decided to create the Raspberry Pi Foundation and its scope, its purpose was to create a, a kind of a hacker's board, a hobbyist board that you could use connected to a television and learn the fundamentals of programming and electronics and have fun at a very low cost. And that's when we had the Raspberry Pi born. Now there were two models of uh, Raspberry Pi. Initially there was a Model B, the first one that came out, and then there was a Model A that was slightly cheaper and it lost things like uh, the ethernet port, it had a reduced number of USB ports and it had less memory. But in terms of the internals, what it could run, it was exactly the same device. And then over time we had the Raspberry Pi 2, and then we had the Raspberry Pi 3, and the Raspberry Pi 3 moved us over onto quad-core 64-bit uh, protos using the Cortex-A53 design. And then we had the Raspberry Pi Model B Plus, which actually uh, upped the processor speed and gave that bit more performance. But actually there was never a Model A for the Raspberry Pi 2 or the Raspberry Pi 3. Now as this classic design that we're calling it of the Raspberry Pi is coming to the end of its life, from the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi 2 and the Raspberry Pi 3, they've decided to release a Model A Plus going back to that original idea of the Model A, but now for the Raspberry Pi 3. So in doing that, they've kind of uh, had to reduce some of the things to bring down the cost. And again, it's following that old formula, there's less memory, there's less USB ports, there's no ethernet port, uh, but actually internally, it can still run the same software and do the same things. There is of course also the Raspberry Pi Zero and the Raspberry Pi Zero W, which are much, much cheaper, five and $10. Uh, and they are also very interesting, but they keep that original kind of CPU design from the Raspberry Pi 1, now clocked at one gigahertz, single core ARM v6, whereas the Raspberry Pi 3, quad core, much faster, Cortex A53, 64-bit processor. So different prices, different target audiences. Now the Raspberry Pi is good for two very distinct things. First of all, it's great for learning how to do programming. It comes with, of course, Java and Python and C compilers, and there are even things like Scratch, kind of how you can build programming using blocks, and that is all there, and there's great for, as an educational tool on how to get into software engineering, how to get into programming. JavaScript, of course, is in there. You come, you get a browser, all that stuff that you need. Whatever your flavor is that you wanna follow, it's a great way to get maybe a young teenager or a teenager into programming. And of course it doesn't exclude adults and hobbyists uh, as well. And the other thing it's great at is it's got these GPIO pins, general purpose input output pins, which you can connect up to different things like sensors and to stepper motors. And you can actually start to build circuits and you can make LEDs flash and you can turn lights on and off and you can actually do quite a lot of stuff. And there's a whole ecosystem that exists now with kind of breakout boards and displays and e-ink displays and all kind of things that you can kind of connect up to your Raspberry Pi, touch screens. I mean, there's just a whole bunch of stuff that you can get and you really start to build up a kind of a complex system. And of course you can then use the programming skills 
to access those sensors, to access that display, to access that stepper motor, and you can control those pins individually in Python, in C, whatever you want to do. And so now you've got the world of hardware and software merging together, and a new generation can appreciate both the hardware and the software, and kind of how to control these things. So the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus has got the same internals as a Model B Plus, that is that 1.4 gigahertz quad-core Cortex-A53 ARM V8 processor, but to reduce the cost is only half of the RAM, now you only have half a gigabyte, 512 megabytes, there's no ethernet port on there, and there's only one USB port. So all of that combined together means it has a lower cost. So actually the RRP in dollars is $25. In the UK, you get it for about 23 pounds. And in Europe, you can get it for about 27 euros. Now, the way you get things running on a Raspberry Pi is you download the operating system, Linux operating system from the uh, Raspberry Pi website. You literally just copy the, the contents of the zip file over onto an SD card. You boot it up on that SD card. That will bring up an installer where you pick what you want to do. You can install the uh, Raspbian, which is the kind of Linux that they give you. All there's loads of other things, including media centers and there's other operating systems you can download. You can do all that from inside that. It just copies it all onto the machine and then it boots up again and you're into a Linux desktop. Now this is where the real issue comes with the uh, Model A Plus and that is the desktop. Because you now only have 512 megabytes of memory, that desktop can be quite uh, strained. So what I mean by that, well if you just run the desktop, it's absolutely fine, you know, it's only using up maybe a quarter or a third of the main memory, you can kind of just click around on Windows, open up a terminal, no problem at all. You can even open up kind of like LibreOffice uh, and load up a big Word document and that will be absolutely fine. You can open up, of course, a Java IDE, you can open up a Python IDE, you can do compiling from the command line and all that stuff is absolutely perfect. But if you open up something that's very resource hungry, like a web browser, then things start to go wrong. If you open up a web browser with one tab, you're gonna be just about okay. Once you start getting to two, three, or even four tabs, things really do start to go downhill very quickly. So the problem is once you get two, three, or four tabs, it seems as if the Raspberry Pi starts to use the swap space a lot, and there's only 100 megabytes of swap space, and then that, of course, is very slow, and it becomes very unresponsive if the mouse doesn't move, and in fact, on two or three occasions, I had to just pull out the power cable and reboot to kind of get myself back to a starting point. Now, if, as I said, you're just using one tab, maybe two, you're gonna be okay. I also found that if you set the swappiness level to something very low, like 10, then you do get a bit more uh, responsiveness from it because it's not using that swap space so quickly. So basically the bottom line is this, if you're doing Python or Java, or you're even doing word editing, or you're kind of just using it for programming the GPIO pins, the desktop is great, it's not a problem. If you try to do any kind of serious web browsing, it will just kill it, and that's just because of that 512 megabytes of RAM. So basically my recommendation with this, if you want a, a device that doesn't have a desktop running, but you need it for controlling robotics or home automation or for command lines, stuff then you can get the model a plus you can use that and it will be absolutely fantastic if you need the desktop for what you're doing and it's going to involve web browsing then you're going to need the model b plus but even that isn't actually brilliant at it but that's you'll find out that from my video when i reviewed the model uh, three plus a uh, b plus sorry and that's a link to that in the description below but it's much better than the model a plus now you might be wondering, well, that sounds uh, pretty bad. Well, no, it's not bad because if you're building, as I say, devices inside home automation or robotics or even a cluster of kind of Raspberry Pis for supercomputing uh, experimentation, then this is absolutely fine. That's all command line. It's really just doing that desktop stuff that can be a bit of a drag. Of course, remember, this is running from a five volt USB power supply and there are no fans on this. So making you know comparisons to a desktop really aren't uh, applicable here because there's not a huge massive heat sink on this. It's a tiny little board with a tiny little processor on it that's doing some really amazing things. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the performance of the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus and compare it to previous generations of the Raspberry Pi. 
Okay, so here I have uh, five Raspberry Pi terminals open. This top one here on the left is the Raspberry Pi 1. Of course, that's a single core ARM V6 processor. Here is a Raspberry Pi 0, also a single core ARM V6 processor, but clocked slightly higher than the Raspberry Pi 1. Then a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, which causes the quad core uh, ARM V8. And then the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, which is a quad core uh, ARM V8, but clocked higher than the Model B. And then this one here, the odd window here, is the one we're testing today, the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus, which of course is also the quad core ARM V8, but clocked at the same speed as the Model B Plus. So this is a program here that I've got, which uh, calculates prime numbers. I used it in my example video about multitasking, multiprocessing, and multithreading, and you'll find a link to that in the description below. We'll just kick it off. It calculates lots of prime numbers, and we time to see how long it takes. So we're gonna kick it off on all the different machines here and see what the overall result is so we can compare the relative performance of the different boards. So obviously the Raspberry Pi 1 and the Raspberry Pi 0 are going to take a much, much longer. We can see here now the results are starting to come in. So on the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, you get 11 point. Uh, eight seconds. That's how long it took to calculate all those prime numbers. The same test on a Model B uh, Plus took uh, 10.1 seconds. So about one and a half, uh, 1.6, 1.7 seconds faster. So you can see the advantage of the higher clock speed. And here on the one we're testing, again, 10.1 seconds, which shows you it's running at the same speed as the Model B Plus. And Raspberry Pi 3, Model A Plus, Model B Plus basically give you the same CPU power, but you've got less memory and you've got less uh, USB ports. And let's see how long it takes on the single core ARM v6 processors. And we'll come back to this in a moment when the results are in. Okay, and now we can see the results are in for the Raspberry Pi. The original Raspberry Pi, it was 1 minute and 40 seconds to do the same thing that the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus does in just 10 seconds. And for the Raspberry Pi Zero, 1 minute and 19 seconds. So a clear kind of, you know, 20, 21 seconds difference there. And that's because this one is clocked at a higher speed. But we can see the best performing Raspberry Pi models today are the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus and the Raspberry Pi uh, 3 Model B Plus, which have the same CPU configuration. So there you go. That's a relative idea of the speeds of the different Raspberry Pi models. Okay, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this review of the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A+. If you did, please do give it a uh, thumbs up. Also, please don't forget to subscribe and do share this video on social media. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.